Hi there, welcome to Mark Hitter's channel. On this episode, we're gonna look at the tongue drum, also known as the slit drum, also known as a log drum, and by a variety of other sort of brand names like happy drum or whale drum or hank drum. But basically, they're all the same technology. So let's get started and take a look what these guys are all about. Now the log drum in Africa goes back a gazillion years. We don't know exactly how long. Wood doesn't survive very well, but we know it's one of the oldest instruments. Here's a picture of what African log drums look like. Now they're basically the same technology where you take a body and you cut or carve um, various tongues or various shapes out of the body so that you can strike it with a mallet or with a finger or hand or whatever and have a resonating chamber that can amplify that sound and basically give you a tone. And those tones are tunable based on the size of the tongue, the size of the chamber, blah, blah, blah. That is the basic engine behind these instruments. And this is what an African log drum sounds like. It's a sound I'm sure you're all pretty familiar with. Now in Africa, these things are still played today. They're known as the crin drum as well, um, and they are predominantly um, a sort of West African phenomenon, although they can be found everywhere. But what is super interesting is on the other side of the world developed a very similar drum. And this drum was a drum of the Aztec people, and it's called a teponachli. Now this drum usually has two tongues. Um, it's a slightly different structure than the African log drum or crin. Um, but it is essentially, again, the same technology. So what's really interesting about this is that this drum developed pre-Columbian times, long before there was known um, intercontinental travel between them, before the Portuguese or the Spanish or anyone from Europe started colonizing South America or indeed Africa in the 15th and 16th century. So what that means is that these drums developed exclusively in two different parts of the world. Now just take a look at this tepo nachli. It's a beautiful instrument. I took this picture in the Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City, and here is an example of how that sounds. Now the Aztec tepo nachli and the um, African log drum are um, basically gonna have two notes, or maybe three, or maybe four at the very most. But as these things have developed through the ages, um, tongue drums now come with anywhere up to 10 and more tongues on a drum. And so we're gonna take a look at one that I have um, that has 10. So this is a modern tongue drum. Um, can also be called a whale drum, I'll explain that later. Um, I call it a maroon box. Um, there are many names for it, but it's basically a tongue drum. And it has five notes on each side. which is really quite an interesting tuning. So on the left side, you have a low E flat, and then you have an octave above it, a high E flat. Then over here, you have a G, a lower G, and then you have a high G above that. And in the middle, you have the B flat. So that's basically giving you an E flat triad. Then on the right hand side, you have a low F, and the octave above that, an F above that. And then over here, you have a low B, and then an octave above that, a higher B. And in the middle, you have an A flat. Again, essentially giving you a triad, although in this case, it's a diminished triad. So it's super cool for playing um, one five, one five patterns, for example. Super fun! Okay, now let's talk metal. So people have been making tongue drums from metal objects um, out of propane tanks, out of all sorts of different gas tanks or whatever they may have. But around the 80s or 90s, people started really formulating these things. For example, a guy called Fele Vega built a helium tank tongue drum, which he called a tambiro. He made a YouTube video about it, super cool. And a whole bunch of people were inspired by that. Amongst others, a guy called Dennis Havlena constructed his own version of a tambiro, um, which uh, was using a much bigger 20 pound um, propane tank. 
And that's basically what this is. Now he called it the hank drum um, because it is a combination between the tank and a hang drum. Now the hang drum actually features quite prominently in the development of these metal tongue drums um, because they are basically related in a sense. The hang drum, if you'll remember, take a look here, is a basic inverted steel drum. It's the same technology. I did a whole episode on the hang drum. Go take a look at it if you want to see this in detail. Here is an example um, of what the hang drum sounds like. Now it gets a little confusing because if you look up whale drum uh, on Google, you're gonna find this kind of drum, uh, the wooden box drum called a whale drum. And then you're also gonna find the big propane tank tongue drums called whale drums. Uh, I'm not sure why that is. It's a little confusing, but for all intents and purposes, a whale drum is a tongue drum, be it wood or metal. So now let's talk happy drum. Happy drum is the name of a company. I have two of them here. And we are gonna look at these two and how the happy drum came into existence. They've only been around since 2008 and they were inspired by the hang drum and also inspired by the hang drum. And they try to create a nice combination of those two concepts into one drum, which I think they've done very successfully. These are wonderful drums. Um, they have a whole variety of them, but basically again, they have tongues, as you can see here, that are cut out of the metal and each tongue is tuned to a different note. And then the frame or the body is what resonates that sound or amplifies that sound. So, so for example, this one here has a smaller body um, that will affect the sound. They also make a variety of different drums, different keys, different sizes, and very cool. They actually make one where you can tune yourself each of these tongues. What they do is they put a metal something or other stuck to it on the inside. And if you move that around, you can actually tune it yourself. So you can have a user tunable happy drum. It's amazing. I'm definitely gonna order myself one. Now this one is in F major, and this one is in C major. Now I got them um, together like that for a very good reason. If you take a look at the cycle of fifths, F and C are right next to each other, meaning they will share the maximum amount of common notes between those two keys that is possible when two chords are right next to each other on the cycle of fifths. If you want a more in-depth uh, explanation of how that works, go and look at my Jazz Harmony Prime episode on progressions. I explain in some detail there how the cycle of fifths actually works. So let's take a look at these notes. Okay, so starting here, we have our low F. Moving to the right, we have G, and then we have A above that. And then over here, we have our C. And then over here, we have our D. And then back to the F, an octave above this one. And then we have a G here, which is an octave above that one. And then we have our A here, which is an octave above that one. So we've got a couple of octaves here. So we've got our two Fs octaves. And then we've got our two Gs above that octaves. And then we have the A and the A above that octaves. So it's really a very simple pentatonic scale. And what is very cool about it is it means it's easy to play. And you can play this in two different modes. You can play it in F major, or you can play it in D minor. This happy drum over here, this is exactly the same structure, except it's up in C. So it's basically a fifth up from that one, but the structure is identical. So it's basically the same thing I'm playing, but it's a different drum and has a different sound. It's made from a different material. I'm not sure it's more like a bronze or something, um, more of a twangy sound, but um, they're both great in their own way. Now I'm gonna do something with mallets and uh, incorporate both drums together using those common tones I was talking about.
you can see, I can play almost any note on either of these drums and somehow it kind of works. It leads into some multimodal stuff, which is really cool. And that's with only two drums. Imagine if you had three or you had their tunable drum, uh, you can come up with some really cool stuff. And so I was speaking about being able to play multimodally in these things. I've been playing in F up until now. So let me switch to D minor. So you can easily play in D minor on the same instrument by just concentrating on the D and the A and the F, which are the three notes of the D minor triad. So that's about it. I've really only concentrated on a few types of different tongue drums here and talked about a very limited history of this instrument. I haven't even discussed what happens in Asia with the tongue drum, which is substantial. Um, so there's much more to be studied and to be spoken about here, but not in this episode. Um, now, one thing I didn't mention, Happy Drum also make a hang drum. It was the first hang drum I ever bought. It's the hang drum in D minor, the one that I show in my hang drum episode. Uh, go and check that guy. It's a really well-made hang drum made by the Happy Drum Company. Okay, that about wraps it up for my episode on the tongue drum. Um, I love these instruments. These are awesome instruments, especially for kids or for anyone who just wants to enjoy music and not have to study a whole bunch to do it. These are super simple instruments to play and a lot of fun. And Happy Drum is an amazing company. They make very happy products. Um, I highly recommend picking up a couple of these guys um, for your next camping trip or whatever it is, your next kids party. So I hope you enjoyed that and I will catch you on the next one. Don't ever stop learning and booyakasha! Thank you.